Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ali El Baroudi. I am a university teacher and mosolographer. My story with photography goes back in time to the 1990s. Does it mean I took photos at that time? No. I was walking by Saddam Hussein's palace compound and I saw a no photography zone sign. I asked myself why. I was just 17 years old at that time. I didn't find answer at the beginning and then found out that some beautiful things are meant to be forbidden in certain places. A decade later, I saw a photographer. I asked him to look through the viewfinder. It was the first time to put my eye behind the viewfinder and I saw a completely different world, a world of details that the naked eye may not be able to detect. I decided to have my first camera and try myself through this. AJX Sony, AJX 100 was my first camera, my first photographic friend. I treated it, in fact, like a friend, and I thought that I would be able to use it freely. Later on, I found out it was not that easy in a war zone, in a zone that bombings, kidnappings, and security tensions happen all the time. War has always been part of our life, at least where I was born. I was born in the outbreak of the Iraqi-Iranian war and lived through the economic blockade and then 2003 and what happened later. Anyway, did I stop? No. I resorted to indoor photography and later on when I traveled to the UK back in, the, back in 2011 and the US in 2013, these two trips made me a real photographer. I had a freedom, I had resources, I had the means, and I came out with some beautiful photos like this. This is USU, Utah State University, Utah Logan. It was very peaceful and a beautiful place and I have fond memories, fond photographic memories with it. Another photo is for the beauty of Manchester, UK. That was back in 2011, 2012. And then inside Iraq photography, like the beauty of Kurdistan. This photo was taken in Duhok Dam. However, I came back home after all in 2013 to see that Mosul is going through even a worse situation. Bombings were happening all the time and the camera was dusted on the shelf. What happened later? It was culminated by the fall of the city to ISIS in June 2014. I did not sleep that night, that very night. And when I woke up, I opened the front door. The battle was still on in eastern Mosul. I still remember this scene and my first photo under ISIS. Mosul looked this. Mosul looked like this at that time. Smoke plumes, dark horizons, firing in the air, and mortars. It was not all about Mosul. It was about Mosul, Iraq, the Middle East, and the dark tunnel we were heading into at that time. ISIS era was the worst ever, in my opinion, the worst ever for my city. Photography, like any other means of documentation, was completely forbidden. But did I stop? No. It was very, very difficult to do. Photography was completely forbidden. Some people were even executed for taking photos. I still remember a student, he took a very innocent photo and put it on social media. It was about an airstrike and they found it. They found the guy and they simply executed him. But did I stop? No, although of my father insistent objections that I should stop. It was dangerous for me, it was dangerous for my family, 
I practice photography from inside my house, thanks to the 30x zoom of the Sony HX100. Th I have an emotional memory with this photo. It was in May 2015 when a neighborhood was airstriked and a lot of be people died there. And I have cousins and friends there. I, s I was so worried about them. That's why it was quite an emotional and dangerous shot at the same time. Another photo from Under ISIS. That was October 2016 at the outbreak of the liberation battle. I opened the door and I saw this. What does it mean? It's an open door with a smoke plume. For me, I captioned it like this. War, the door to war has always been open in my country. However, this is another photo. You may think that this is a sunset or this is Photoshop. This is not a sunset. This is not a Photoshop. It was taken at 2 p.m. And it was a time that ISIS started burning sulfur to stop the liberating marching forces. Very few photos from inside my house, but photos with the stories. That was a quite an eye-opener for me, that it is time to start a new genre, a new photographic career in which I focus on photos with the stories, photos that can be remembered later. Then January came, January 2017. For me, it was like a second birthday. 8th of January is definitely my second birthday where and when we were liberated. I looked around, I saw a dark time, I saw a dark city, I saw destruction all around. But should we stop or did we stop? The answer is definitely no. I had a plans to start a new career and a new genre. We started with this. This was May 2000. And 17, while the battle was uh, still raging in Western Mosul, I joined Mosul Eye Save the Books campaign to save the books, and I was their photographer. I still remember the first time I entered the campus. You could uh, smell soot from a mile away because of the destruction and because of the burning of building and infrastructure by ISIS. It was their strategy to create huge smoke plumes so they can make destruction to the F-16 or to the marching forces. Another photo from the central library of Mosul University. And these photos are not simple photos. It's not because they are taken by me, but the point is they are documenting an era and they are sending messa messages to the world that a city like Mosul will not die. A city of like Mosul will revive from under the debris just like these books. Another photo for volunteers, Mosul Eye Save the Books team volunteers. And we had to take the books sometimes through the missile holes from one floor into another. It was not completely safe. It started in May and ended in August 2017. This is another message. This photo was associated with another one in Serbia when a cellist appeared in a library and started playing the music. So any new idea is usually criticized. They say, what are you doing? You are bringing musicians to play music while the war was still raging in Western Mosul. And we usually said that life must continue and life must co come out from the middle, from the heart of death. Another, another objective for me in the post-ISIS photographic era is to attend festivals and cultural events that culture matters most for people of Mosul. As a photographer, I feel so burdened with, with a moral responsibility to convey the truth no matter how.
another festival. This was the reading festival. It was back in September 2017. You can see that thousands of people are still willing to live, still willing to attend cultural events and ex express themselves in a quite a civilized way. For me, this is one of the best, and I call it the colors of Nineveh. You can see Christians, Assyrians, uh, Shabbat, Kurds, Yazidis, all in Mosul. And this photo was back in October 2018, last October. And last but not least, this is how we want children to live. Not to live through wars, but to live through a music, painting, and art. All these campaigns that I have joined were culminated by many publications and quotations, like this photo of me for the uh, Church of the Church of the Clock in Old Mosul. It was published in Brazil. Another one, this is the Italian La Repubblica. They published some photos for our efforts to save the books from the central library. And you can see behind the first open air photo exhibition for me and for painters. Again, in the British Guardian, another photo for the return of life, the return of the academic life to Mosul University. This is the central library and life looks normal. Last but not least, now I have my own gallery on the official UNESCO website. Uh, they cast a, a hashtag and a campaign to revive the heritage of Mosul. A couple of months ago, a journalist asked me, do you want to be famous? Do you want the world to know who you are? I said, well, fame is something good, but what matters most is that the world must know about Mosul. And for me, when I publish a photo and I see responses, positive responses and help and campaigns for the city, that's what matters most to me. Photography is not a process of pressing on the shutter of the camera because a photo is not taken like that. A photo is taken with passion, with obsession, with objectives, and with the plans for a better future. Thank you. <laughs>